Hi everyone, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. I'll give you an update later in the day as regards to what's going on Twit Twat, but let's get into this first video. A couple of days ago, I did my episode 3 review for Loki. <laughs> okay, the episode was absolutely garbage. I mean, it was terrible. And I have not been impressed with the series in general. The first two episodes I have found to be excruciatingly boring. But the third episode was a completely different level. It felt like it fell off a cliff, really. It felt like it was written by a school child who was attempting to write their first ever prose. Um, nothing happened in terms of uh, development of characters. Uh, two pieces of information were provided in the full episode. One of them being that the TVA agents were actually variants and not created by Jesus Space Lizards. And the second one is that Loki's bisexual. We'll get to that point later on in the video and the way that that was also presented. But otherwise, the episode itself was just god-awful. Uh, the location was dreary and boring. The dialogue was pathetic and mundane. The fighting scenes were generic. And at the end of the episode, and if you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it. However, I will say at the end of the episode, you realized you just wasted your whole time. Now, I started off the last... I started off the review, I should say, with this right here. And this is how I'm going to start today's video, because... Bisha K. Alley is the writer, credited as the writer for that episode. And that episode, like I said, was pathetic. Now, this is a British political comic. Uh, I've only seen a tiny fraction of their work. Uh, pretty much out of seeing it, I'd seen enough. It was your typical, hateful, spiteful, envious uh, comic uh, who hated white people. <laughs> surprise, surprise. We'll get that uh, to that in a moment as well. Uh, and of course, has smoke blown up their ass because they tick the right boxes in terms of exactly what the BBC are looking for nowadays. And one of the main reasons, of course, probably why people are hand over fist stopping paying their British Broadcasting Corporation television license because the BBC no longer serve the British public. They only serve a portion of the British public. Where does that sound familiar? It seems to be uh, something which is happening all over the place. But also, uh, Bisha K. Ali is going to be the showrunner and writer of Ms. Marvel. The upcoming Ms. Marvel TV series, which will lead into the Marvel's movie... <laughs> at a later date which will have brie larson's captain marvel you'll have monica rambo's um proton soup proton whatever and you'll also have ms marvel in it bet you can't wait for that film uh anyway you can imagine what's going to happen on this uh show it's just going to be uh, a complete and utter disaster but I want to go back two years in time about this person. Yes, two years in time. And this is an article from Bounding Into Comics from August 26th, 2019. And by the way, if I scroll down to the bottom, they did a lovely article, John F. Trent, on my banning from TwitTwat. So go check him out. God bless him. And this uh, runs with the headline of recently announced Miss Marvel showrunner, Bisha K. Ali, deletes... 5,000 tweets and private social media accounts prior to D23 Expo. Now, of course, I mean, I'll leave that. No, I'll leave that till later. I'll leave that to my Twitter update video, what I was going to say. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> uh, Br British comedian, you should have put that in inverted commas. No shayer, though. And recently announced Ms. Marvel showrunner, Bisha K. Ali appears to have mysteriously deleted 5,000 tweets and locked her numerous social media accounts prior to Disney's official announcement. 
Now, of course, she, she had to delete those tweets or she made sure to delete those tweets and lock the accounts so people couldn't get in and check what she's put because they were just complete and utter anti-white tweets. They were just... Uh, not. Or I'm not saying all of them, all 5,268 that were deleted, uh, but there seems to be a lot of uh, anti-white rhetoric in there. What a surprise. Where have we heard this before? Uh, again, while Ali has not publicly given a reason for this attempt to hide her internet presence from the public. I mean, if you've tweeted out there, surely you stand by what you've said. No? No? Oh, okay. Fans noted that Ali had deleted a total of 5,268 tweets less than a month prior to Disney's announcement. Stroke my chin, stroke my chin, stroke my freaking chin. <clears throat> it's currently unknown what the contents of the deleted tweets were, or what prompted the mass deletion of tweets, but Google search results and a handful of archive posts have led to speculation that Ali deleted the tweets due to her social justice-based progressive beliefs and views. These include tweets defending the recent trend of political assaults known as milkshaking. That's where if you didn't like a politician, somebody would go up and throw a milkshake on them. The use of the racist hashtag, hashtag white genocide. I got banned on Twitter for a Game of Thrones tweet. She's posting hashtag white genocide and she's fine. Okay. And multiple interactions with her account responding in agreement to her posts with a racist anti-white rhetoric. So you can immediately, just by that small little uh, portion there, understand why the BBC loved her and understand why Twitter love her. Uh, great stuff, isn't it? Now then, I just want to show the... Um, the incognito window that I have open here. Because I can't obviously get onto Twitch. Oh, yeah, can I just open up an incognito window? Uh, this is Kate Heron, who is the showrunner for Loki. And this is what she posted after Loki episode three came out. Because the second piece of information, because there was only two pieces of information, like I said, the episode gave, was that Loki is now canonically bisexual. Before I even read this out, some people are going to go, oh, but in mythology, this is an MCU Loki. And an MCU Loki has not been canonically bisexual up until around 2018, when progressive Marvel had been destroying everything anyway that they alluded to, to anything like that. Now, I know in mythology loki has transformed himself into horses and been rutted and and all this kind of stuff but that's that's fantasy you know but whatever from the moment i joined loki it was very important to me and my goal to acknowledge loki was bisexual it is part of who he is, well, now it is, and who I am too. I know this is a small step, but I'm happy and heart is so full to say that this is now canon in MCU. Okay. So this is probably uh, 101, number one, top of the list. First thing that you should go to in how not to write a TV series. The TV series is not there to be your little play toy. The TV series is not there for you to impose yourself, to insert yourself into that character so you can feel represented, so you can feel important. Your first priority is to entertain the fans. And when you have an episode like o Loki episode three, which was so terribly written, boring, advanced nothing, and then had this very, very set up specific element to talk about love, which was, of course, simply to uh, announce that Loki is a bisexual character, according to Kate Heron. 
and nothing else happens in the episode at all apart from we find out that the tva agents are actually humans and they're not created by jesus lizards you have one very very boring 30 minutes and selfish 30 minutes because this kate heron whether it be kate heron or bisha k ali these are the people who are now writing the mcu going forward they don't care about you as an audience this is all about projecting themselves projecting their own politics and pushing it forcing it onto you and if we look now at the um at the interest come on you can come back there you go i know i was away for a little bit but you can come back you can just see where it's trending now on google trends first episode pretty high second episode even stayed relatively high and the projection on the third episode is that this show has just fallen off a cliff in interest and i gotta say hand on heart truthfully one of my normie friends who i gotta be again i gotta be honest uh since Koof's hit i've really sort of dropped out of touch with them uh i really need to do better i do need to do better uh, but they they contacted me and they said, "Hey, dude, we, uh, me and my missus, we just watched your um, Loki episode three review after we'd seen the episode, and uh, you were kind of saying exactly what we were saying when we were watching the show." My mi and these are normies, by the way. These aren't people who are uh, locked up in the culture war. These aren't people who are trying to fight back against this this woke invasion of shit. Uh, these are just normies that want to be entertained. Uh, particularly his missus you know these are people that that get up in the crack of dawn go to their jobs work damn hard and come home uh and, and cook tea and want to put their feet up that's the type of people that these are and he said my missus barely made it through the episode she wanted to turn it off halfway through she was so bored and we don't know if we're even going to carry on watching it this was awful they said awful normies legit hand on heart folks normies now i know that's just two people but the sentiment here is that this episode really did turn a lot of people off and it's very very obvious to see why because marvel disney whichever way you want to put it are hiring selfish self-absorbed narcissistical activists who can't see past skin who can't see past sexuality who must force their politics into the show and they do not have your um thoughts your uh feelings emotions remotely in mind they don't care about you it's all about pushing it onto you educating you and even if they don't educate you they don't care like kate heron because as kate heron said it was my goal my goal of the of the series not to entertain you but to make loki like me because i'm so insecure and a narcissist can't wait for ms marvel to come folks <laughs> i'm kidding i can wait a long long time hope you enjoyed the vid if you did do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel follow me on social media which is now instagram only heel underscore versus underscore babyface at instagram please do link is in the description box down below and i'll be back with some more stuff very soon you take care bye for now friday night tights later on baby